Hello and welcome. In this video series, I'm going to explain how I use JMRI to operate signals. I will be using simple signal logic by programming and setting signal heads in Layout Editor, how to control those signals by way of a modern looking dispatcher control panel, and logics. This will be a multi part series. Be sure to watch them in the correct order. To be the first to know about any other videos on my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Here is a diorama I built to demonstrate how to use Digitrax hardware and JMRI to add operating signals to a layout. JMRI is a free model railroad software package available for download on the internet by going to jmri.sourceforge.net. The Digitrax hardware you see here is the DCS-51 Zephyr command station. The PR3 computer interface, the SE8C signal decoder, and the BDL-168 block detector. I will presume you already have JMRI downloaded, are familiar with the Digitrax equipment, and have the PR3 drivers installed. Follow Digitrax instructions for connecting the SE8C and the BDL-168 to the local net. The BDL-168 has four zones. Each zone has four detection sections. The board ID I'm using for my BDL-168 is board ID number 7. By going to the monitor local net window and running a locomotive through each section, we can see which section is connected to each input on the board. Looking at the message a few lines down from the top, we see it says sensor LS104 is high. That is the message being sent when that section is detecting something in that block. Therefore, LS104 is the address of that detection section, making note of which section is occupied when the locomotive is in a given spot, we can map out a track plan and mark the address of each block. Turning our attention to the SE8C, we want to find out which switch address will operate the turnout and the range of addresses that will control the signal aspects. My board is on the factory default board ID of number 1. This means the turnout control address will be between number 1 and number 8 depending upon which output you used for your switch machine. Mine happened to be on address number 1. If you look at page 7 and 8 in the SC8C manual, you will see the range of switch addresses used by each of the 8 signal driver sockets. I have my signal driver cable plugged into socket number 1. The switch addresses then that control the signal aspects connected to socket 1 is a range from 257 to 264. We can verify this by throwing and closing switch address 257 from any Digitrax throttle and watching the corresponding head change from green to red. Throwing and closing address 258 changes the signal from yellow to a fourth aspect as defined in the board's op switches. Each head will then have four positions, green, red, yellow, and a fourth aspect. You can set the fourth aspect in the SE8C through the op switches. Refer to page 22 and 23 in the SE8C manual for instructions on how to set op switches. We want our SE8C to make the fourth aspect dark. Later, this will allow JMRI to flash the colors on each head for a more prototypical look. Armed with this information, we can populate the sensor, signal head, and turnout tables in JMRI and create our track plan in the layout editor. With your PR3 connected and the layout powered on, Open the JMRI software and set it to communicate with your layout through the PR3 using whatever COM port its USB cable is assigned. This is done in the preference window. Verify that JMRI is communicating with your layout by opening the monitor local net window and seeing that it is receiving messages from local net. From here, you can also change some of the op switches for the signal and detection boards. Now we want to open the tables window. Go to tools, then tables, and click on turnouts. We can see that our turnout address is not listed here, 
so we can input that by clicking add. Make sure the system type is set to LocalNet and enter the number 1 in the hardware address field and click OK. Clicking the button under the CMD column should now operate the turnout on the layout. Next we'll want to go to the sensors window. Sometimes when the BDL 168 power is on it will send all of its sensor addresses. We are only interested in the sensor inputs connected to our layout. If you run your locomotive again you will see the state change for each section as the locomotive moves. You can ignore the others. If the addresses are not listed click the add button at the bottom of the window and enter each address you mapped out earlier. Now we move on to the signal heads window. Click add and the add new signal window opens. Set the signal controller type to SE8C and give your new signal head a name. The pattern I use is as follows. The numerical location of the signal, a letter to denote which mast at that location, and a number listing which head if it's got more than one head per mast. As we discussed a little bit ago, each head uses two switch addresses. Since we never added that address range to our turnout table, we will need to click Create New and type in the address number for that head. Clicking the button in the state column will now cycle that head through the three basic aspects. Let's go back to the turnouts table and add the range of addresses for the other two masts. Since we have two addresses per head and two more heads to input, we need four more addresses from 261 to 264. When we go back to the signal heads table and go to the other two heads, we can select them from an existing list. Okay, so we have the turnout information, the sensor information, and the signal head information all populated in their respective tables. This is all well and good, but it's going to be more exciting when we get the track drawn on the layout editor and the signals linked to the track. So let's do that next. From the main window, go to Panels, New Panel, and click on Layout Editor. This brings up the Layout Editor window where we will draw a basic schematic of all the track that is detected. Follow the instructions at the bottom of this window. We're going to check the end bumper box. Holding down the shift key, left click where you want to drop the square. Do this for the other two points where the track ends. Now, check the left hand switch box and also the main line box. Again, with the shift down, left click to place this in the window. Keeping the main line box checked, check the track segment box. With the shift key held down, click inside a red square on the switch and drag it to an end bumper. When you see the crosshair, unclick on your mouse. Repeat this process for the other two track segments. You should see the red squares now turn green, meaning they are completed. You can right click and drag the squares to move them around the window. We need to tell these track pieces what hardware they are connected to. By right clicking in the circle, click on edit. I just named my turnout LT1 to keep it simple. But we also want to see when the switch is occupied, so we are going to need to assign it a detection block as well. I simply name the block after the sensor address it uses. Click create edit and you'll see the colors listed when the sensor is in a different state. Go to the sensor tab and assign this block to LS104. Clicking the switch in this window will now control the turnout on the layout. We also need to assign sensors to the other three blocks. Do them in a similar fashion.
With all the blocks assigned, when we place a locomotive, a detected wheel set, or a lighted pass in your car on the track, it will trigger the BDL 168 to show occupied. This is displayed here as a red track section.